Hello, this is Angelina Hill, Director of Institutional Research at the College of the Redwoods, and I want to introduce the California Community College's Student Success Scorecard that you see here. This is a very hot topic right now. Um, this scorecard, um, it replaces the ARC report, which was a um, several hundred page PDF document. So this new online um, report is a, is a very welcome um, change. The scorecard has many of the same indicators that were present in the ARC report. So you can see on the top here, persistence, 30 units, completion, and so on. Um, for those more detail-oriented folks, um, the Chancellor's Office does provide um, a detailed um, comparison of the metrics that were in the old ARC report to those in the new sco scorecard. And um, for the most part, the differences are subtle. There were a few um, of the indicators that were um, removed from this scorecard. But for the most part, um, this is very similar to the ARC. It's just putting it in um, an easier to um, digest format and um, updating some of the indicators. You can get to the scorecard by, um, well, several ways, but you can go to the Institutional Research website at the CR homepage, and then um, we have a link here to the Student Success Scorecard. And then you can look at the scorecard metrics for um, any of the California Community Colleges. And we're actually under College of the Redwoods here, um, whereas we're actually under Redwoods <laughs> in um, the Data Mart. So we select that and then here comes the scorecard. The scorecard uses management information system or MIS data that each community college um, sends to the chancellor's office on a semester basis and this is the same data that um, gets used in the data mark. The scorecard um, starts off with the college profile so you can see um, the number of students, that there are more um, females than males, um, about half of um, CR students are 24 or younger, um, and we have a growing um, population, 11.6% um, Hispanic students. The number of students and full-time equivalent students, or FTS, has been on the decline since 2009-10, um, and um, it, you'll see another decline in 12-13. Now I'm going to talk about each of the, the metrics here, persistence, um, 30 units, and completion. And I think about these um, related to one another. So with persistence, we're looking at uh, the extent to which students at CR are persisting in the, the beginning of their career. Are they um, sticking around from um, the, their first um, year to the next year? Then the 30 units, if you think of it in terms of an associate's degree, are they making it through to midpoint of their career? And then for completion, now we're saying, okay, are they sticking around all the way through and going, um, being able to actually complete um, their, their degree? Um, and so I'm going to start off with persistence first. Then. The persistence um, metric provides uh, the percentage of students in a particular cohort who um, are first-time students and who remain enrolled for three consecutive semesters, so fall to fall. With this persistence metric, um, as well as the 30 units and completion metrics, um, the students are tracked over six years through to the 11-12 year. So these are actually a cohort of first-time students who began in the 2006-2007 year. So you can see here that there are three different categories. There's college prepared, unprepared for college, and then overall. So that includes everyone. And this is the case for um, all of these metrics. So the college prepared group just includes students in the cohort whose um, first um, English or math class that they attempted was um, at transfer level. And then the unprepared group um, their first English or math was below transfer uh, level, and then the overall has everyone there. You can see that the college prepared group has a much higher um, persistence at 70% uh, compared to the unprepared group. 
Um, what you can also see though is that the overall group percentage is much closer to the unprepared for college and um, that is because um, the unprepared for college group actually contains much more students than are in the college prepared group and this also highlights one of the limitations of the scorecard and the scorecard only gives percentages and so um, we, we don't know we could have counts in here that are, are quite small. Having a really small cohort can, uh, or group can lead to misleading um, numbers. So for example, if you look at the 50 or over group here, um, we're within the college prepared. So if we have um, fewer college prepared than um, unprepared, and then within the fewer college prepared, we have, you know, we know we, that we have fewer students who are 50, 50 or over, um, we might really have only a very few number of students um, who are making up the percentage in this section, and of those few students, they all happen to persist. Um, so this 100% doesn't necessarily tell us that um, this group is persisting um, at a really, really high rate. It just may be chance that this group of particular um, students who fell into this group persisted at a high um, rate. The same is true for many of the breakdowns um, for the ethnicity race category where, um, for example, for Pacific Islanders or Asians, you're just getting to so few students that you're really tracking um, that the number um, becomes um, somewhat suspect. Um, Overall, though, you can definitely see um, a difference in persistence for those who are college prepared, um, persisting at a higher rate than those unprepared. And then overall, you can see some um, differences between the different age groups and um, eth ethnicities. I should note that the um, Chancellor's Office here is able to look at um, en enrollments anywhere within the system. So this persist these persistence rates aren't just showing whether or not a student persisted at CR. It's also looking um, and will count as a persistence if the student in the cohort shows up anywhere um, within um, the community college, California Community College system. And that's the same um, for the other metric, the 30 units I'll talk about as well. So moving to the 30 unit metric, now we're looking to see of, this is again starting with that 2006-2007 cohort, um, tracking them through to 2011-12, um, what percentage of that group of first time students um, completed um, at least 30 units. And again, the breakdown for the college prepared students, um, the percentage is much higher than for the unprepared group again. And you'll notice that the college pers uh, prepared percentage here at 71.1% um, is um, qu quite high uh, compared to the persistence rates that we just looked at. Um, similarly, this percentage here isn't much lower for the unprepared than um, for the persistence rates. And um, that's because of a large number of students who um, take classes on and off at, um, at CR. And so although they might not be consistently um, enrolled in classes, they uh, do accumulate um, units over um, you know, several, several years. So here you can see overall, you can see a slight uh, difference here between females and males. Um, you can see um, an, age, um, an age disparity here to some extent with the 20 to 24 and 25 to 49 um, um, groups um, lower than the others. And then you can see some consistent differences in ethnicities. Then again, I just caution um, you not to make too um, strong of interpretations from um, some of the breakdowns under the college prepared group and some of the ethnicities that may have a, a small student count. Now moving to the completion metric, and this, this was the um, student progress and achievement rate indicator, the SPAR indicator, and the ARC report. Um, this again tracks the 2006-2007 cohort over six years through to 11-12 um, to see if students not just completed, so it does track to see if they received a degree 
or certificate um, completion within that time, but also if they transferred to um, another um, four-year institution um, or as well as if they were um, um, transfer prepared, meaning that they earned at least 60 um, transferable units with a GPA of 2.0 or higher. So yet again, you can see um, some, some large differences between the completion rates here of the college prepared versus the unprepared. So the college prepared are um, over 50% of the cohort are um, having some type of completion um, compared to the unprepared group now at 32.4%. Um, so um, we're seeing the, the college prepared students moving through um, and, and receiving um, some positive outcome um, at a, a much higher rate, much higher rate than the unprepared students. Um, you also see a difference here um, for age with the under 20 group um, completing at quite a higher rate um, than, than the other groups. And then again, you see these um, fairly um, um, noticeable, con consistent um, differences between um, um, ethnic groups. So now I'll move to talk about the remedial and career and technical education metrics. And these are um, have a different form than the ones we just looked at. Um, so for the remedial um, metrics here, um, first let me start by saying that there is a coding um, error that we are aware of in the MIS data for math. Um, so um, we ask that you not interpret um, the, the math information right here. We are working to get it fixed, um, but it is, it is not correct at, the, at the point in time, this point in time. So you can't compare um, math to English. Um, but if it were correct for math, what this is showing, supposed to be showing, is um, of the students who started um, uh, this is going back again six years and tracking them through to 11-12 um, of that group if they started out in a math course that was two levels or more below transfer so that's any of our 300 level math classes not math 120 but if they started out um, in the 300 level math classes it looks to see if they ended up completing transfer level math within um, the six years and um, so the then English is uh, very similar, except it looks to see if they started out in um, at least one level below transfer to see if they end up um, completing successfully completing um, transfer level English within the six years. And um, I, I realize that that the number looks low. It looks low for for many colleges. Um, you can see, again, some differences here. Um, again, there's a problem here. So for ESL, this was a problem in the ARC reports as well, that we have so few students um, that are falling into this ESL cohort that the numbers have um, been all over the place. Okay, so the final metric is for career and technical education, and this is very similar to the completion um, metric that I talked about before, um, except it's specific to career and technical education students. So again, it tracks um, students in the 6-7 cohort over six years to see um, what percentage of them received a degree or certificate um, or transferred or were transfer um, um, prepared, um, but it's specifically looking at students who have completed um, more than eight units in uh, one particular um, CTE discipline. So the rate here is at 63.4% um, strong, and so you can see that the breakdowns by the groups here are different for the, this um, group of students. So now we see males completing at um, a somewhat higher rate than females, which is the opposite of um, the overall completion rates. And then um, we see the under 20 is a little bit lower than the, the oldest age group and, and so on. It's a different pattern than what we saw before um, and the same for the breakdown by ethnicity. So that's the last of the metrics that I wanted to show you. Um, and now that 
and you are more familiar with these, uh, the last thing I'd like to show you is um, at the bottom here, you can actually download an Excel file that shows you these metrics over a five-year period. And this is um, a really useful um, um, document. So here it is. This is the Excel file that you end up downloading. And you can see along the bottom here, it has um, each of the metrics broken down by the different categories that we saw. So we saw the uh, college prepared, um, and prepared is the remedial overall, um, and you can see up here that it actually has the cohort size. So you can see that, for example, the prepared um, in, the, in the completion here, the college prepared in the 200s versus the remedial group in the 6 and 700. So you can see that there really is that big difference um, in size. And then you can just um, begin looking for um, trends in how the percentages have changed across um, the five-year period, which is um, um, really insightful and um, especially now that you're more familiar with the metrics, um, that'll be more meaningful uh, for you. I know that this is a bit to take in, so um, I, will, um, I will stop here. And um, obviously the scorecard's going to get updated um, annually, um, so we will um, come back to this each year.